Hello and welcome again to another episode of Battle Ready. So Drake and I were discussing, you know, people who want to start playing Warhammer. And so this is really for you. If you and your kid, <laughs> coming down, <laughs> if you and your kid, maybe your friends, whatever, you're thinking about getting into Warhammer. You think, oh, maybe I want to try this Age of Sigmar thing out. What? A, where should I start? Uh, first, I think you should be looking at the lore. I, I really think that if you pick an army that you're into, you think it's super cool how the orcs fight, or you think it's super cool the lore behind Alariel and the Sylvaneth and what that means, or you think you're just really into some of the chaos stuff, go for that. That's going to be the number one pick. I would not worry at all about you know what the super competitive metagame looks like and what armies are better and what armies are worse for the most part especially if you're just going to play with your friends and your family and things like that it, it doesn't matter but today we'd say well maybe uh maybe you've read some books maybe you've read some things about the gold shiny men the lightning men the lightning boys as the lightning boys awesome. and uh, you want to know is it worth starting out what are the pros and cons of starting your army with the Stormcast Eternals. So I have a list here. We're going to go through a couple of pros and then a couple of cons or I don't know if they're cons, but things to think about before you buy in. All right. First pro. You can get a lot of them comparatively cheaply. So there's a start collecting set called the Thunderstrike Brotherhood. Interestingly, interestingly, None of them have Thunderstrike armor. Yeah, what? Yeah, I know. They How is it Thunderstrike if they're, none of them have Thunderstrike armor? Yeah, they came up with that name for that set. And then later on, when they named the armor, they named it Thunder, Thunderstrike too. So the Thunderstrike Brotherhood oh. doesn't actually have Thunderstrike. But you actually get a lot of models. You get two leaders, a Lord Celestine on Dracoline and a Lord Relictor, which is this guy. Hello. And there's... I, I mean, I looked online. I couldn't find a way to buy him separate. So that might be the best way to get him. You also get three Prosecutors and ten Liberators. The, the Liberators are ancient. They're the oldest battle line, yeah, for sure. that's why I say the ancient. But you get ten of them, right? You only need five, so that if you break them into two units of five, that gives you two battle line right mm -hmm. there. So I think that's a really good, and it's only, I say only, but comparatively, it's only $85 on Games Workshop, and so you could probably get it, you know, ten bucks cheaper on at a another shop or something like that. Which so that's is a good, $75. Good math. That is a good amount of models, and it's a good amount to start with. If you want to get some of the new stuff, there's several different starter sets that you can buy. Uh, the, uh, Dominion sold out, unfortunately. Is it sold out? Maybe. Yeah, so you can get Dominion, well, if it's available, or any of the Dominion starter sets. There's the Warrior. Harbinger, Extremis, all that sort of stuff. And Warrior. A Warrior. And that will give you a lot of the newer models. But you have to buy it. it. Includes cruel boys, so you're also paying for those. So if you can split it with somebody and say, "Hey, I'll, you know, we'll go 50-50, and I'll get the uh, stormcast side, and you get the the orc side," cool. Uh, so those are also ways to get the models. Um, so overall, you can get into stormcast pretty fairly inexpensively, as compared to other lines, which are just just going to be harder to get into. Uh, so I think that's pro number one. Pro number two, they have an updated battle tome. Brand new for 3.0. They were one of the first to get it. Them and the uh, orcs got theirs first. What's up? I was about to say, yes, them and the orcs. Them and the orcs. So you got that going for you. And the nice thing about it is it is fully in line with version 3.0. A lot of the other armies, and not that it's an insurmountable thing, right? If you really enjoy Night Haunt or something else, yeah, they're absolutely playable. But the cool thing about the Stormcast is they're very much in line. The new battle tome is written with the, the third edition rules in mind. So there's it runs very smoothly. There's not a lot of weird like, oh, when do I use this ability? Or how does this work with the new rules? It's all just there. And the other thing that's sort of neat about it, especially if you're you're wanting to start, 
is they pretty much eliminated all War Scroll command abilities. There, I, there might be some that I missed, but uh, for the most part, those were all gone, which is great because then you don't, that's less, few, or I should say fewer, fewer abilities you have to memorize when you're playing the game. And you can focus on sort of the main command abilities like, you know, all out attack, all out defense, inspiring presence, stuff like that. And you don't have to worry so much about, oh yeah, what is, what's that thing that the Lord Celestin can do? Oh yeah, what's that thing that, that's not going to be there. So those are all sort of moved into either passive abilities or other activated abilities that don't require command points. So Stormcast as a whole are pretty new player friendly. There's not a lot that you're going to have to worry about messing them up. I would still either get or look into the Battle Tome first. Uh, make sure that you like the sort of the story that's around them. They're sort of the good guys of Age of Sigmar more or less. And so if that's the kind of thing you want to play, they're, they're right in line. All right, third pro, what do you think about that? I think they're both very pro. <laughs> okay, you didn't, nothing to add on those ones? No. Okay. Third pro, tons and tons and tons of variety. They have more War Scrolls than, than maybe any other faction. I, I mean, they just got the Dracon War. Yes, they got that. But, I mean, they have all the stuff from when they first came out with the Liberators and the Lord Relictor and the Lord Celestent and all that, that stuff. That Lord Relictor is old. Oh Well, I mean, it's from the beginning of Age of Sigmar, right? Because so there's definitely model lines that have stuff that's from fantasy battles, right? Even older than Age of Sigmar. So there's that stuff. Then uh, there's the all the stuff that came out for second edition, and they made all new models, right? They made Sequiturs and the... Knight and Cantor and the Lord Arcanum and all this stuff that was all for 2nd edition. And now with 3rd edition, they made an all new line, which includes Lord Imperitant and Vindicators and all kinds of stuff. And new group hounds. <laughs> yeah. So you, uh, if you're interested in one of the things that's nice about Stormcast Eternals is however you want to play them, there's a build you can play that way. If you want to play heavy shooting, you can get a bunch of shooty guys and you're going to be able to play Knights of, uh, or I'm sorry, Stormcast Eternals, where they just shoot. That's all they. That's all they do. If you want to have lots and lots and lots of models, Stormcast tend to be a little bit more on the elite side. But you can get a lot of models if you get a lot of liberators. You get some prosecutors. They have inexpensive guys that you can just sort of flood the battlefield with, and there they are. So like if, if you, you buy a billion liberators. Oh sure, yeah, because that's their cheapest battle line. So you could have all kinds of Liberator squads running all over the table. Um, if you wanted to do something very mobile, there's... Uh, and lots of stuff can be made battle line. If you want to be very mobile, there's a whole storm host that makes your prosecutors and things like that battle line. If you want to be Hammers of Sigmar, these guys, which can hit pretty hard, uh, depending on the build you have for them, those become battle line. So, so wait, an doesn't that mean Annihilators and uh, Marketers, I'm pretty sure? Become line? Evocators don't. Evocators aren't technically paladins, but I think there is a build that makes the paladins like retributors, decimators, and uh, annihilators. Now I'm, I might be missing one, but um, that makes them battle line. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do. You can sort of mix and match, and whatever play style you want, sort of magic heavy with an elite focus, sort of shooty, sort of melee, sort of um, all kinds of different stuff. You can find it in that book. So that's the nice thing about Stormcast. Some of the armies, for example, if you play Zinch, you're going to be playing heavy spells. Yes. You, you're going to want magic, right? Yeah. So if you don't like magic, Zinch is, not for Zinch you. is probably not for you. And if you do like magic, Zinch is for you. You probably don't want to play corn. Yeah. Right? So there's. Corn has uh, zero magic. Zero magic. He basically. hates magic. Wait, basically, what well, do you mean? Well, he's got prayers. It's sort of similar. Oh, yeah. Prayers can unbind uh, endless spells. Un endless spells, yeah. Only. So if you, um, if you, there's certain armies that sort of push you toward a particular play style or, I should, or even have a smaller range of play styles. But these guys are, the Stormcast Eternals are broad enough that whatever way you like to play the game, you can do one with Stormcast Eternals. It's pretty fun. Will it be the most super competitive tournament winning 
bring home the trophy build? No. No, but there's, you know, that's a whole different, that's a whole different thing. What we're doing here is creating fun with our family, with our children, with fr friends, and the Stormcast Eternals have lots and lots and lots of ways to be fun. All right, another pro. These bad boys are easy to paint. So if you are going to play the Sons of Behemoth, they're mega gargants. That's, there's a ton of skin. They're really big models, which means if you make a mistake, it tends to be a little bit more noticeable because they're, you know, the mistake's bigger. That they stand this big on the table. Yeah, yeah about. about. <laughs> they're big. They're, they're big. They're mega. Gargants. Gargants. Megas. But these guys are super easy to paint. This game is very, the scheme is very friendly. You're going to use game. metallic paints, a little blue, a little white, right? You're going to use, um, they come with helmets that you can put on them. Some of them have options, like this guy has an optional no helmet. He has no helmet. And this guy. Uh, Zach, I have no helmet too. No. Yeah. So you can, if you want to have them helmetless so you can see their faces and you want to paint that, cool. Those options are there. But if you just want to slap gold on them and make them look good, then uh, they've all got helmets. So you build them with the helmets, you paint everything gold, blue shoulder pads, a little bit of silver, you hit it with a wash, and you're basically done, right? Yeah. Now you can take them a lot higher if you really want to, you know, get into the details and you really want to have super high paint level because that's what you find mm -hmm. enjoyable. Cool. There's nothing stopping you. But if you just want to get them looking table ready so that you can play, these guys have a lot of, they can do that. And they can do it pretty easily. You've painted some Stormcast. How do you feel about Stormcast as compared to like when you painted the Arcanites or the Sepulchral Guard from um, whatever faction they're from? Legions of the Gash, but I, I guess they're in Soul Blight now. Uh, yes, they're in Soul Blight now. So what do you think about painting them? Um, I think the uh, Sepulchral cool Guard was relatively easy because you just slap some bone colors on them. Sure. Some red, some brown, so those are pretty some easy. silver, you're done. But, what, but talking about Stormcast, do you think they're easier to paint, harder to paint? What do you think? I think if you're just st sticking with the basic cameras of Sigmar, you're fine. Yeah, that is true. So in the book, if you wanted to paint, they have a bunch of different alternate paint schemes that are sort of ideas for you if you want your army to look different than this. Ones with white armor or black armor or teal armor or, or silver. And those are all super valid if you want to make up your own scheme. That's that's great too. But the sort of the default scheme, the one you're going to see in all the you know, product placement, is this one. And it's it's just real nice. It's just real nice and simple. And you don't have to stress out too much uh, in building them. I mean, in painting them. It's going to be an easy paint. You're and going to get through them. Build. Yeah, and for the most part, these are all, they've all been pretty easy builds. A lot of these... This, these guys here, this, I don't know about that one, but a lot of these guys were um, this, the easy to build models and uh, they are, yeah. they are easy to build. So those are, those are nice too. And then last one, you mentioned this already, Drake, you're skipping ahead on my list, mm -hmm. but the last one is what I like to call dragons. So we don't have any yet. In fact, nobody has any yet. They're coming in December. But the well, Storm... Games, Go ahead. Games Workshop people has them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the company has them. <laughs> dun, but dun, but dun. no uh, consumers have them. And that's because they're coming in December. But they are getting dragons. Not only are they getting two giant dragons that can are sort of characters that can be added to the army. About this big. They stand as big as Mega Gorgons. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. How, that might be a little bit too big. Really? But they're they're larger. I mean, they would be sort of centerpiece models. And but not only are they getting those, but a whole series of dragon riders. And there's a knight Draconeth who you can build who's a hero. And if you make him your general, then all the dragon riders become battle so line. So you can have an all dragon so, army. Yeah, you can have an all dragon army. So if you I like say yes dragons, to that. <laughs> you like that. Yes. If you like dragons, Stormcast are going to be where you can you can have your dragon riders right out and right now the dragon riders are at least on paper they're really good especially for their points they're probably underpointed 
Now, between now and when they come out, that might be changed. At the sort of the mid-year or the January, February, they do a sort of a rebalancing. So if you buy all dragons and then the points go up and you can't use them all, it's sort of a risk you take. But uh, if you like dragons, dragons are available in the Stormcast. Will be available. Yes, will be available. Thoughts on dragons? I wonder what the orcs call dragons. That's what I wonder. <laughs> That's what you wonder? What do they games workshop? Let us know. Yeah, well, if we get some Drake, some uh, orc names for the, for the dragons, that'd be good. All right. Know. So those are all positives. And I think, on the whole, great reasons to pick. If you're thinking about Stormcast already, you know, if, you're, if you are leaning towards, you know, Daughters of Cain, I'm not here to say for sons. Knives. For, for knives. They have a lot of stabby knives. It's I'm not here to say Stormcast Eternals are better and you should do that. What I'm saying is if you're already sort of interested in Stormcast, what do you need to know, right? So all those are reasons why you're on the right track and you should pick some Stormcast to play. But I think there are a few cons, and they're not even really cons, but they're things that you should be aware of if you're new to the game. Just, just to be aware. So I've got a couple. I think Drake might have one. But here goes. So the first one is that there are a bajillion War Scrolls. There are just, there are just more units of Stormcast Eternals than anything. And that's because every edition of the game, this. they get a whole new suite of units. Yes. And as the game comes out, they've been making more ones. Yes. And there's a, and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of them are heroes. So you have a ton of different lords, a ton of different knights, a ton of different... And then you've got Lord Celestin. Lord Celestin on Dracoline. Lord Celestin on Stardrake. Celestin Prime. Lord, well, that's a separate thing. But then you've got Lord Arcanum. You've got two different named Lord Arcanums. Lords Arcanum. Probably Lord's Arcanum. Mm -hmm. Two different named ones. Then you've got Lord Arcanum on Taralon, Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger, Lord Arcanum on Foot. There might be another one that rides something. But it, there's just a gazillion. There's just a gazillion dudes. Just on this table, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I've got six here, but I think there's something like 70 something War Scrolls. What? I was pointing at how, I was going to count how many more are in the box. Oh, there's a lot in the box. They can't see the box. Go ahead and sit normal. Okay. But there's a ton. So if you just show up to your local games workshop store and say, hey, these guys look sort of cool on the shelf. I'm going to buy them. Gosh. That you. I wouldn't do that. I would get the battle tome. I would read through all the different war scrolls. And I would start putting together, okay, I definitely want these army guys together. And then now that you know which 15 War Scrolls are going to make up your army out of 76 or whatever it is, go get those. I wouldn't just buy whatever's on the shelf because you just, it would be hard. It would be easy to make some mistakes. It would be easy to overpay and buy stuff that ultimately you're not going to really want to use. Um, but that said, once you get your feet under you, now, there's so many options. So it does become a pro where once you've got your feet under you and you sort of know how it's going, it's a good thing to have that much variety. But in the very, very beginning, try to do a little research. Thoughts on that one? No. No? Sounds good? Yes. All right. Um, another negative is they only have the one start collecting box, really. The Thunder. The Thunderstrike Brotherhood. And it mostly features older models. And it's, I mean, it's, it's good for a start, but you're going to want to expand from there pretty quickly. And there's not, you know, some of the things, Seraphon have two start collectings. There's a Saurus one and a Skinks one. Stinky Skinks. Um, the Nurgle has a Demons one and a Humans one. Immortals, I guess. But Nurgle's still in its 1.0 book. Right. I'm just saying they've got multiple start collecting yeah. books. The I think Skaven has a couple different ones. Uh, I think there's one for men's and one for machines. No, I think it's a... Uh, men's and machines? Normal, like the basic Skaven stuff, and then there's one for Pestilence. Oh, I bet Pestilence is the one with the machine. It's got a like a plague furnace, I think. Yeah. yeah. But 
so there's a lot more different variety. That's not not the same with Stormcast. So once you sort of get that starter start collecting, which is a good start collecting, you're just gonna have to look at that and say, all right, where do I go from here? And then it's a little more a la carte. So just be aware of that. I don't think that's necessarily a con because it gives you a lot a lot of flexibility, which can be good, but just know that it's not the kind of thing where you, you pick up the one set and then it's like, you, you think to yourself, oh, well that leads directly into this set. Oh, well that leads directly into this. No, once you pick up that first set, you kind of have to, you're gonna have to feel it out yourself. It's not easily directed where to go. And then the last thing to think about, for me anyway, is I think that there, with 76 War Scrolls, a lot of them are very good. A lot of them are very fun. A lot of them are gonna do things that are very cool in your games, especially if you're not worried about a competitive level, you just wanna play with friends and have fun and roll dice and kill their dudes and, and have your dudes die, right? That's, that's the fun of it. But with 76, they can't all be bangers. They're not all gonna be great, right? If you do 76 of anything, there's gonna be a couple of stinkers in there. And that is true of the Stormcast. There are a couple of units that are just super underwhelming. Like what? Well, I got one right here. Oh. The Knight Arcanum. Well, I guess he's, the only thing he's really good for is his spells and he gets a no fun level. Yeah, so he's really, his whole thing is he's good against endless spells. Now, if you play with a lot of people who use endless spells, and endless spells are, are constantly in your games, he's great. But uh, at least for us, the endless spells have been Not rarer. I mean, usually we'll bring one in a game, maybe, and sometimes it gets cast, and sometimes it doesn't, but they're not overpowering super parts of our game. So the Knight Arcanum, eh. And it's funny because the previous set had a Knight in Cantor, which has an automatic dispel. So that endless That's spell true. you cast, I could just automatic dispel it with the Knight in Cantor, right? Quick question, why and haven't we seen a Lord Arc in Cantor? Maybe we will one day. I don't know. There and that Knight in Cantor is, has a good, better spell than the Knight Arcanum does. And that Knight in Cantor is cheaper. It's fewer points. So he's sort of a stinker. Another one I think is a little bit of a stinker is the Knight Relictor. So the Lord Relictor is a priest, has his own spells. Spells? Uh, yeah, prayers. Has his own prayers. Gets a bonus to chant prayers, so he succeeds on a two instead of a three. Oh, oh, ah. But the Knight Relictor gets neither of those things and is only five points cheaper. So is that why? Why, Why would I bring the Knight Relictor? He's not, he's not better, really, in any way. And, and he's only Lord, five points cheaper. And the Lord Relictor, it's a cool ha helmet. Yep, the Lord Relictor has a cool helmet. That is 100% accurate. That's why you want him. Let's so I, I bring that up to say, look, in, after, out of all those War Scrolls, there's going to be a few stinkers. And some of those stinkers are just, you compare them to very similar you know, other units that are going to fill, fulfill a similar role in your army. And they're just worse. They're just worse. Now, maybe you really like the Knight Arcanum for his story purposes, or you really think the Lord Relictor model looks super cool, and so you definitely want him in your game. In which case, cool. I'm not saying that the if you bring a Lord a Knight Relictor, you're going to lose every game and everyone's going to laugh at you. That's not. You're going to have fun. It's going to be great. But if you're looking at it to at least from the game perspective of, all right, I at least want to bring in things that are going to make sense, there's a, there's a couple of stinkers in the army. So you just want to be careful to avoid those. Thoughts? Uh, no, but I have a con. Okay. What's your con? It is expensive. Three words. Yeah. Okay. So that's definitely true. But... I don't think Storm Stormcast are significantly more expensive than most other armies. All of Warhammer is pretty expensive. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, Warhammer. Maybe we'll see when the dragons come out. Maybe the dragons are going to be ridiculous expensive. Yes, that's honestly going to be true. <laughs> I'm sure it is. But like the Stormstrike Brotherhood, you get a lot of models and a lot of pretty good ones for a relatively decent price. Like if you price those models out, 
you'd be paying at least double that, yeah. probably more. Um, so I think you can find good deals with the caveat that you're absolutely right, Drake. All yeah. of Warhammer is going to be expensive. Why isn't it called Expense Hammer? Yeah, it should be called uh, Price Hammer. It's going <laughs> to make you pay those prices. So overall, I think if you're already if you're interested in Stormcast, I think you're interested in a good army. It's a great one to start with. It has a lot of fun built into it. it has a lot of story built into it. You get to um, you have a book that's ready to go for you. You've got a lot of variety, and if you if you just know where the pitfalls are and you know to just do a little research before you just go out buying things willy nilly, it's a great army to start with. Final Isn't thoughts? Uh, I have one pro for orc players. Well, no, we're not gonna. We'll do orcs out on the one. Let's stick with Stormcast. No, Any mean, thoughts on Stormcast? Fun. Uh, Stormcast Pro. Day is fun to smash. <laughs> yeah, you, you make Stormcast are fun to kill. Yes. So let's talk about pros if someone wants to start a Stormcast army. <laughs> All right, do you have anything there? No. No? No final thoughts? If you were just starting, like let's say you had a friend, right? And he came in and said, I'm, I'm thinking about playing Warhammer. And you thought, hey, cool, I want another friend that plays Warhammer. And he says, I'm thinking about Stormcast. What do you think? What would you tell him? Yes. No, I mean, just you would just say yes? He said, well, what do you mean? What would you tell him? Two, three sentences. What would you tell your friend? I would tell him yes because they are easy to make starter, easy to build. They are easy to build. Easy to build army-wise, not model-wise. Sometimes it can be hard. Maybe. Like maybe like when we, whenever we get like cars are they scared or scarred. Cars you think we're going to get that one? <laughs> it, I mean, if you do, he's probably going to be harder to build. What would you say if he said, do you think they're fun when we play? Do you think they're fun? What would you say? Yes. What makes them fun? Um, they have a, they can be built for melee, for horde, for shooting. You for like spells, that variety? For prayers. They go in all ranges. They do have a little bit of everything. They've got mounts. They've got prayers. Yep, that's definitely true. All right, well, if you are interested in... Stormcast Eternals is your starting army. I hope uh, this has helped you make that decision. And uh, if you have anything that you that we missed out, or if there's anything that um, we should know, feel free to comment. I'm interested to see you know what armies people start. So this has been another episode of Battle Ready. Thank you so much for watching.